Hello everyone, welcome to the fourth class of the Pattern Language course. Today we shall be having a working session. The students will be looking and reflecting on some of the patterns that they had developed while they visited the site and also from the different conversations we've been having during the classes. We shall be able to brainstorm and try to work towards developing patterns that can be applied in the Shitintale informal settlement. Stay tuned. So we've discussed the different patterns that I had, we renamed them, and we've realized that we have patterns that are actually the same. Um, maybe the different is the naming is different, but we can have the same naming for those patterns. I'll give examples of like um, the different culture zones or sub zones with boundaries, because we noticed we had like the embassy area, then we had the island. Um, then you had an area for farming. So all these different zones and they were bounded with like pathways um, and roads or bridges that you were jumping over to go to the next areas. That's a very nice one. I think right off the bat, it's very interesting that you're already at that skill identifying like uh, some kind of zone, some kind of identity of different uh, areas. Did any of you have a similar pattern? I had my pattern number three, I, though I called it relationships between people, but then in my explanation, it was um, the point where we had Nelson to like take us to that place because without him, would not then be in that particular settlement because of the nature of people so it showed that those people had a relationship with people within that area that gave us access yeah that's a good one and it's as it comes under that one so they, there is a relationship between the two but they are different patterns right also i have one it relates to it uh, i was focusing more about the drainage as we can see when we was in the in the in the in the in the street uh, happy street and we are going to the, the island there is a bridge which can separate the the uh, the two two boundaries you cross that bridge you go to island because of that i was focusing on more than the accessibility and uh, the bridge even i i named one of my patterns the drainage the drainage which it is it is like a link or connection between two between the two uh, two boundaries when you cross it it takes you to another area which it has a boundary and they have different activities and different lifestyles yeah that's a good one as well because it's speaking now about how to get to one from one place to another it's a very unique pattern but you can see a relation with that one because you need to from one zone to another you need to go through a certain right but i would say you have to name the patterns before you you start with the, the large one the zones then you go deeper then you go deeper because there are those small connections between the smaller ones right that you also want to be able to capture I think to add on what the two have said, like, okay, the the issue of it being zoned already, it has an element of it being having culture boundaries already. So each zone tends to have its own uh, maybe organization or whatever, like like the skate park. We see that majority of the people that are there are like kids. So it's like people who are under age of 18 that are there enjoying their life. But as you cross onto the other side of the island that's where people like they're doing the their own businesses from that side so it's like zoned out already it's like those who are younger like they're safe from whatever is happening there and not everyone can access that's why we also had uh, someone who took us through there but if we went alone like so i think uh, to to relate with some of the patterns it's it's a little bit organized to a subculture boundary 
thing, but there are also other challenges of which the LC mentioned that people come from different backgrounds, they have different ways of life. So some people tend to help themselves outside. Some people use the toilet, some people like they just do bushes. So that's another thing that uh, like culture wise, there could be boundaries between them and maybe the livelihood around there could be okay. And the other point is, um, in terms of, I don't know if I should say politics or the rulings of that, it's quite organized. Like you have the skate park and it's organization or all those um, organizations that are under, they all have its own party, like its own organization. So if there's something that happens, they start from within before they go a step above to the else's office. And if the else's office cannot handle, they go upper. So they kind of have its own, it's kind of organized politically, like, so it's very arranged. It's interesting that you also raised the issue of uh, the age groups, the makeup of these zones. So you're taking the zones further than just this geographical zone, but it's also a social zone, right? Because this is kids area, this is, you know, ga ganja man. I'm looking for a polite name, but I can't find it. But you get what I mean. Like that's their zone, and and even the level of privacy starts to change because now that's when we have to, they need to have given them a heads up. So such very intricate um, social lines that are existing within the area, and I think it's very important that you're touching on them. Also, when you speak of the politics generally and how they are organized and how they handle levels of you know crime or disagreement at what scale who handles what who reports to who who goes where so again you're seeing different you start on a small scale you go to a different scale so i think you need to capture all those things within your discussion we looked at uh, the accessibility and in this we 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 looked at the roads that that can be used by the vehicles and we saw that um if there is a road, then there is only one car that can pass through. And then the narrow passages for people to access their homes. For instance, we, the, in terms of scale, there are those we noticed are like about four to three meters wide. Those are the ones where you find only one car using at a time. But even in between the houses, the, those narrow spaces are like less than a meter where people can pass through to access other sites. And I think Happy Street, when we're going to Happy Street, that is where we noticed like some of those where you enter through a corridor and you come out and there are some stalls and some activity there. Another one we looked at, I think it's, uh, it's more of uh, the, the parking lots mm? because we realized there are spaces like the commercial shops whereby in case someone has a vehicle, because of the narrow roads, in case someone parks their car tomorrow to go and buy something, they will block in any other vehicle that will come from behind, which I think later on leads into this larger pattern of accessibility. So uh, for me, I didn't really go much deep into like how Henry did, but one thing that I used were the events that were taking place in the, in the neighborhood. And I feel like those events, some of them need to be reinforced so one of the things that I noted was rubbing shoulders. So in rubbing shoulders, we are literally talking about people coming together, like meeting spaces. We already know we have the skate park, which is there. So that is something that could help in fostering a sense of community. But again, we know that since this is a slum, there are like pockets of spaces that could be used to to create such spaces yeah so the other thing that i did was because i was using the book as well so the book creates that big pattern then it keeps giving you solutions on how to solve it so the other thing is i looked at now those those patterns in the book and some of the things that could help us in building grabbing shoulders could be small public squares now that is where i got the idea of pockets of spaces within slums developing them and making them better then courtyards which live this one really struck me because of the boxing training ground, which was more like a courtyard. So that is, those are the things that I saw. Then trees, tree places, like incorporating vegetation into these spaces that could make it more lively and sustainable. So creating a balance between the built and, and the natural environment. Now, um, there is another one that I got that was the mobility and security. 
Now this one, I looked at the parts. Is that your title? Yes. Yeah, the, these ones are my titles, more like the big patterns that would guide on how to solve them. So mobility and security was dealing with the parts. You know how there are many food parts? Now in the book, it talks about parts and goals where there are these natural food parts that have been created, but then you come in and make them more distinct and more um, usable and secure. So maybe we could create spaces or routes that could be more accessible. Yeah, and now actually the other thing is when you are creating this public squares and then the parts, they talk about destinations. Huh? So we could have public squares at different points in those pockets of spaces and create parts that that really lead to those spaces that are really defined, like give a destination. So mine, I looked at the public spaces that were that were rec or, uh, like recurring in the in the in the place. One of which was the boxing space. And the market. So you find like in there are some nodes where markets were repeating themselves in relation and it was a, it, it is like repetitive in terms of residentials to commercials. Every between every residential and commercial there was kind of a busy spot where people uh, were selling things which was like a market. So I looked at like that can be a pattern that we can dwell on to like create something interesting. And also the LC chairman came and mentioned um, how his office also brings people together. So you notice as, as we walked from the main road towards the inside, we kept on meeting most of those places, but before they were explained, we didn't know um, what exactly they were used for. But as you go and notice on the map, we actually meet the LC chairman's office, which is the courtroom on Sundays. Then as we go along the way, there's the boxing ring where we entered somewhere in between but at the end of our tour so um then where we started from the skate park then um along the way at happy street where we found the bottling the bottle recycling so all those activities still bring people together at some point in the discussion from the first class and the brick making i think though we found only one person at that moment but i think he probably has more people who work with him and the farming so you find that all those are nodes along the path that we took First of all, this happening at different, either there are different scales or different kinds of nodes because the LC1's office is not the boxing ring, right? It's a different kind of space, but what's, what's common is that both are places where people get to meet. Yeah. So sometimes you have that pattern at activity node, but then you have to first do the one that's below it. For example, LC1 office, skate, skate park, boxing ring. Yes, a higher level pattern would be that they're all activity nodes, but even in themselves, they are, they are patterns, right? And LC1 office is everywhere. Is it not? Exactly. And it can have to do with people bringing together so it connects to that, but can also connect to something else. It can connect to something that's maybe more about the organization of Chitinta. But if you group it already, you miss that connection that it could have with something else. Okay. So there is a group one you all agree on, but there are those small ones under it that are different for all of you. So you have to have those small ones also. Is that clear? Hello everyone. This is Nachito Afwa from International University of East Africa. I am, up, I am pursuing paternal language and today has been our fourth lecture. And we've learned how to develop patterns and this has been done in groups and it has been so interesting. Thank you for watching. Hope it's been a fun, interesting class. We'll meet next week.